thought I might do another uh, of my uh, Woody Guthrie songs. You know, I, when I was about uh, 15, I discovered Woody Guthrie, and I, nothing would do me until I discovered who he was and where he was, because the world was a much bigger place in those days. And uh, I'd sent him a letter to Woody Guthrie USA in the hope that uh, maybe he was really well known. I mean, I didn't know. Um, came back. And uh, came back actually with the, the next song is uh, after this is yeah yeah okay. but um, I then I had a, I, I had met Pete Seeger and uh, Pete Seeger told me he was in hospital in in New Jersey with uh, uh, he'd inherited this awful disease Huntington's disease from his mother and uh, he had no longer any control over his limbs and. Um, so I started to write to him in the hospital, and uh, he, um, of course, wasn't able to write back. But the people who looked after him at weekends, uh, who were called Bob and Sidsel Gleason, um, would, would write to me and tell me what Woody was saying and thinking and whatever, because he was still quite uh, uh, compass mentis at the time. And, um, and in fact, myself and rambling Jack Elliott used to make uh, uh, tapes for Woody and send them to him and and apparently he uh, he sang along with them so I can actually say I, Woody and me sang together <laughs> but uh, but this is a song that he really liked I think it's not it's not a song that he wrote um, but it's a kind of frontier ballad that he must have learned when he was quite young and uh, it's called the Rangers Command find the right harmonica for this, but should be able to do that. Maybe you just indulge me a moment while I kind of blow the... Uh... <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, it's not that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ridiculous. You know, all, I mean, apart from being different keys, they're all different tunings as well. So. so you can be in the middle of a great solo and suddenly the note is a semitone sharp. Well, I. Shut up, then. <laughs> <laughs>
to the Ronda with me what she gone She said she go with me to the cold Started for the canyon in the fall of the year, expecting to get there with a herd of fat steer. But the outlaws broke on us in the dead hour. From her warm bed, a battle to fight. Did the lightning and thunder and the downpouring rain? She rose from her warm bed, a battle. from her warm bed with a gun in each hand says come all up you cowboys and fight for your land come all up A long time ago in the county Mayo, my story it first began. Before this country was finally cured by the first economical plan, a brave young man had to leave his home and sail far over the sea. But he got well paid in the job and he stayed on the shores of America. He got on very well, but he sent nothing home, and his mother began to think that maybe he'd run away with a blonde who was spending his money on drink. She wrote him a letter inquiring the news and sent it straight away. And upon the cover she carefully wrote to me, son, in America. Well, the postman collected the letter she wrote and he drove in his van to Cork where he placed it upon a liner in Cove that landed in New York. And there with the whiskey and everything else the mailbags lay on the quay and among the rest was a letter addressed to me son in America. Well, American postmen, I needn't relate, they are rather like me and you. And when at last to this message they came, they didn't know what to do. 
They looked up all the official lists, but these had nothing to say. There was no directory could help them to find a son in America. And it lay round the office for years and years, and it gave all the boys a laugh. Until at length it found some use in training of the staff. To every new postman who came on the job, it was shown as example A. Oh, insufficiently addressed to me son in America. Well, the son, he got older and wiser too, and at last to himself he said, Oh, how are things going with me mother at home, or is she alive or dead? He walked round the block to the GPO, where he stood with his cap in his hand. By any chance there'd be a letter for me from me mother in Ireland. <laughs> Oh, yes, kind sir, and here it is, we've been waiting for you to call. We knew someone someday would come from Cork or Old Donegal, from the 200 million that's living now in the whole of the USA. For a mother in Ireland, at last we have found a son in America. Whoa! Response. <laughs> yes, yes. Something good happened for once. <laughs> well, here's. I'm, uh, I'm not sure whether uh, the the, the mid-break uh, alcohol might have uh, um, loosened your tongues at all, but. Um, <laughs> This song has a, a, a many a chorus, and uh, I think it's quite singable. Um, it's called "Here's a Health to Every Miner Lad," and there's another song about mining. But um, I, uh, I, I I was employed a couple of years ago to sing a, a concert for the uh, the Irish Mining History Organisation. I had a good few mining songs, but I needed a couple more, and I wrote this one, uh, which. It, 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 is an indication, really, of the fact that mining uh, does have quite a, a, a stronger history in Ireland than most people would think. And, uh, yeah, it goes like this. You'll pick up the chorus very quickly, won't you? in store. May providence protect him and depart you from his door. So fill your glasses up, let the toast go merrily round. Here's a health to every minor lad that works down on the ground. That's the chorus. She sang about the union men who fought for better pay to escape the poverty that dug them night and day. And then the verse she did disperse of men from air and sail, how they had travelled round this world for many's a weary mile. So fill your glasses up, let the toast go merrily round. Here's a health to every minor lad that works down on the ground. She 
She sang of some from Cushendon and some from Carrick Town, and more who strayed from Bantry Bay, that place of great renown. She said they were the finest that ever you could behold, for they could turn the hardest rock to silver or fine gold. So fill your glasses up, let the toast go merrily round. Here's a health to every minor lad that works down on the ground. She told how many years ago they worked out in West Cork And when the copper seam ran out they sailed for old New York And out in Pennsylvania they dug the anthracite And they joined the Molly Maguires for to fight for what was right So fill your glasses up, let the toast go merrily round Here's a health to every minor lad that works down on the ground For they joined that mighty union called the IWW. But standing up for miners' rights, it cost them all their jobs. And they couldn't send Frank Little from that vigilante mob. So fill your glasses up, let the toast go merrily round. Here's a health to every miner lad that works down on the ground. She sang a stave about the brave coal miners from South Wales, how they were paid short measure on the crooked weighing scales. She told about Knight Bevan in 1945. He set up the National Coal Board and stood by the miners' side. Fill your glasses up, let the toast go merrily round. Here's a health to every miner lad that works down on the ground. And finally the miners' strike of 1984 And tears ran down her hollow cheeks and she could sing no more That ruthless iron lady in her song she featured not May her name be never mentioned but her deeds be ne'er forgot So fill your glasses up, let the toast go merrily round Here's a health to every miner lad that works down on the ground your glasses up, let the toast go merrily round. Here's a health to every minor lad that works down on the ground. song for uh, about uh, James Larkin uh, yes a hero of, of, of mine and um, uh, I wanted to have it ready for the um, the centenary of the of the 1913 lockout in Dublin uh, but things got in the way and it was so it's six years later that I finished it and, uh, but anyway here it is now and uh, again as a nice chorus, I didn't hear too much involvement <laughs> in the last one. Big Jim, to hear him. It has, uh, okay, the timing is a bit odd, but uh, I doubt you'll dare. I dare you to dare. <laughs> the slum jungles of Dublin town. For disease and death, they were a breeding ground. And the odds were stacked against you and me To live through childhood in such poverty One large family, one small room No money, no work, and starvation loomed I was doing a bit of thieving and dodging the cops When I heard Big Jim 
down on the docks, he says, the only thing to fear is fear itself. We need better housing, we must get better health. And if culture's big for the wealthy few, then it's good for us, we'll have some of that too. Oh, out of the night came this warrior bold, pursuing a vision only he could behold. He says, get off your knees and join in the fight, and now I'm one of your horrible Larkinites. Be Jim to hear him, he believed he was born to win a better world than we lived in, and there never was a man like Be Jim Larkin. William Martin Murphy, he was the man. He owned the Independent and he owned all the trams. He says, if you all want to hang on to your jobs, you better throw away that red hand badge by God. Cause I won't employ anyone after today. Who's in his union, you hear what I say. And if he thinks he can dictate terms, he's got another thing coming and a lesson to learn. But have no fear, did Jim said, we're changing society full speed ahead. For it's our hard work they're dependent upon. If we fold our arms, no work gets done. And never forget that you have no friends. In the magistrates and the policemen When the DMP they come out to play Well we saw what happened on bloody Sunday Big Jim to hear him He believed he was born to win A better world than we lived in And there never was a man like Big Jim Larkin Horse Show Week, the event of the year. All of Dublin society had to be there. But at 10.15 the boys got the nod and they ditched their trams and they walked off the job. But Murphy says without a shadow of a doubt, I'll oh, smash your union, we'll lock you all out. For we are your masters and if we see fit We can starve you to death and then you'll soon submit Oh, 25,000 of us laid off We stood by Lark and though times were tough And our union friends in Britain over there They sent food and money on the big ship pair Big Jim to hear him He believed he was born Summer passed and the autumn went. The weather turned cold, all our money spent. Larkin crossed the sea and his language was rough. He says, thanks for your help, but it's just not enough. What we need from you is an economic blockade. If you're just down tools, history can be made. But to settle with the masters was their intent. The revolution here was the message they sent. It wasn't the worker from the rank and file. But their union bosses scared of Larkin's style. When he says what we need is all shipping blacked, they said, oh no, well we couldn't do that. Big Jim to hear him. He believed he was born. Defeated we were at the end of a dream We drifted back to work and the terms we got They were worse than before God pity our lot 
And as for me, I never found that job. I joined the lost invisible mob. And many of us found work overseas. But I joined the army and the song claimed me. Oh, big Jim, to hear him. He believed he was born to win a better world than we lived in. And there never was a man like big Defeated we were, but as the years rolled by, never again did the bosses try to smash Jem Larkin's union true, the IT and GWU. Oh, James Larkin, you warrior bold, you died in Dublin many years ago. And it was like old times we fell under your spell When we all turned out to bid you farewell Big Jim to hear him He believed he was born to win A better world than we live in And there never was a man like Big 